you are scheduled to undergo an artificial cervical disc surgery. This video is the basics of what you need to know and what to expect. Reviewing a little bit about the anatomy, the cervical spine is composed of seven vertebral bodies. The first two vertebral bodies are unique. They're called the atlas and the axis, and they form a complex that allows you to rotate your head from side to side. The remainder of the vertebral bodies look like boxes, and they're separated by small cushions or discs. Each of these small discs are flexible and they allow a small amount of flexion, extension, rotation, and side bending. The artificial cervical disc is designed to mimic the small amount of motion that occurs in a natural disc. An artificial cervical disc is used to treat a cervical disc herniation. At each disc level, nerves are given off and they travel down the upper extremities. When an individual sustains an injury to a disc, a small piece of that disc can break off and impinge upon one of those nerves. The irritated nerve can produce numbness, tingling, weakness, burning in the upper extremities. Your artificial cervical disc surgery involves the use of general anesthesia. Therefore, I request that you undergo a preoperative evaluation by your primary care physician. As part of that evaluation, you will need a chest film, you will need an EKG, certain laboratory studies, and a urinalysis. This preoperative medical evaluation is for your benefit to uncover any health issues which may complicate your surgery or your postoperative recovery. If you are taking any blood thinning medications, these will need to be stopped preoperatively under the guidance of your primary care physician. Do not discontinue your blood thinning medication until told to do so by your primary care physician. Discontinuing blood thinning medicine too soon may place you at risk for a stroke or a heart attack. Non-prescription medications which thin the blood will also need to be discontinued. Medications such as aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen, other non-steroidal and inflammatory medications, certain herbal medications such as ginkgo biloba, and even certain vitamins. Do not restart these medications until given approval to do so by your surgeon. In the OR, after the induction of general anesthesia, you will be placed on the surgical table in the supine position, which is on your back. An artificial cervical disc replacement surgery is considered a minimally invasive surgery. The incision is less than one inch in length and the surgery is less than one hour. The incision is made in the front of the cervical spine. It involves cutting the skin and subcutaneous tissue and then gently sweeping the underlying structures aside. Some patients are surprised that the incision is made on the front that's because the disc is in front. Also, it's a good thing because surgeries in the back of the neck involve cutting the large muscles that hold up your head, and cutting those muscles tends to be very painful with a very long recovery time. The recovery time with incisions on the front where you don't cut muscles tends to be much quicker. Initially, a complete discectomy is carried out then a trough is made to fit the artificial cervical disc. The artificial cervical disc is impacted in place. Then the incision is closed using stitches below skin level and the skin itself is approximated using glue. Though the surgical procedure typically takes about an hour, it's important to inform your family that when you include setup time and everything else involved, your actual time in the OR may be two hours. Postoperatively, you may have some discomfort and it surprises patients that the discomfort is mostly in the back. Actually, when we place the artificial cervical disc, we are stretching apart the vertebral bodies and the tissues and ligaments that we stretch are in the back. So you may have some discomfort between the shoulder blades. The surgery involves taking the pressure off the nerves, and therefore you may have some numbness and tingling in the hands. The incision is made on the front of the spine. 
You may have some swelling, and therefore you could have some changes in your voice for a few days, as well as some mild difficulty in swallowing for a few days. If you have a very short, compact neck, it may be necessary to strap your shoulders down on the table. If this is done, you can have some pain in the front of the shoulders, and you may even have some bruising along the shoulders. Another thing that surprises patients sometimes is the holes in their stockings postoperatively. As part of the surgical procedure, stockings are placed on your legs to minimize the probability of blood clots, then holes are made in those stockings to place spinal cord monitoring needles, which are a vital part of the surgical procedure to follow the progress of the nerves during the surgical procedure. So holes in the stockings after surgery is a normal finding. An artificial cervical disc surgery is typically an outpatient surgical procedure, which means you can go home the same day, though we aim to please. If you'd like to spend the night, just let us know and you're welcome for a one-night hospital stay. Postoperatively, you will be given a cervical collar. It's best to discontinue that collar as soon as possible, though you might feel it comforting for the first day or so. Your homework is to engage in normal activities of daily living as soon as possible. With the exception, we do not want you doing heavy lifting, nothing more than one or two gallons of milk. It takes about six to eight weeks for the bone to actually grow into the artificial disc and the artificial disc to become fully stabilized. Therefore, we don't want you engaging in aggressive physical therapy or exercise until after six to eight weeks postoperatively. I hope you found this video informative. If you have any other questions, please write to me at Dr. Smith. ElPasoSpineCenter.com. Please remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, share the video, tell your friends and neighbors to watch. Hey, you could even watch it again if you want. I won't mind. <laughs> Thank you for watching.